Carlos Morado. Thought it would match because it's an E major seven, so it's an E note. Octave higher seems to work, all right. beginning of the video I take my glasses off you notice that um, all right let's let's talk a little bit about hats let's talk a little bit about your choices like uh, when you go into a, um, a hat shop sorry I just bring the stand a little lower um, when you go into a hat shop what are your choices what's there and what's offered and um, you know, what have you got to, to pick? A lot of people think, well, I want a Stetson, I want a Fedora, I want a kind of wide brim, something like Kevin's wearing right now, but I'm not really sure of the color. So, you know, you're kind of in the zone, but there's a lot of stuff there. There's just so many hats. Um, it's hard to even explain. You know, somebody might come in and ask for something really weird, like, do you have a duck-billed baseball cap for fishing? You know, and we have them down there, and all kinds of weird things like that. Um, you know, like um, those pith helmets, we call them the sun faris, you know, pith helmets. Um, all sorts of weird things that you would think they wouldn't be a big seller, um, like a straw boater. You guys are familiar with the boater, like the, the flat top, the, the ones that the politicians used to campaign in, and the, uh, what are they called? The, the vaudeville guys, uh, barbershop quartets and stuff like that, you know, they wear them with a little, yeah, you know what a boater is, flat, red and blue bands here and stuff. We sell tons of them, just tons. They come in these big, these big boxes are about this wide. This thick, it's about three layers of boaters on them, but they're really big, wide, sort of these square, flat boxes. Almost look like if you took four guitar cases, like rectangular ones, laid them on the ground, and made this big, sort of long, square kind of thing out of it. They're huge, and we sell so many, you wouldn't believe it. And we also have Panama boaters, and we used to sell boaters in like red and black and blue colors to certain hats sell a lot and we just have to stock them you know in all the sizes all year round um, so we do have a lot of things there for instance um, when we're talking about hats you know like this um, consider a short brim like the Stetson Asher is the one hat that seems to look good on everybody you would think the guys with the really big fat you know kind of puffy faces like this you know you know who i'm talking about um I, i'm more the opposite i'm more kind of like undernourished as you can see really really skinny um but uh i do eat a lot of junk food though, actually and um it's just my metabolism burns and burns and very sort of like that uh heart pumps sort of a lot of it is like anxiety based or whatever, but I'm just like always just kind of like heart is pumping, metabolizing, always hustling, running around, doing this, doing that. So um, I can't really get that fat unless I really try. I mean, I could do it if I tried. You know, if I just ate like, you know, a Hagen Dazs every night or something, I would probably be that way. But, um,. Here's the thing, if you're really big, generally you're going to do a bigger brim. Um, 
problem. I have a very good friend who is one of our best customers who's big. He's a big guy, you know, like, uh, you know, not 300 pounds. It's kind of bigger. But um, he loves hats, and he generally does two and three-eighth, two and a half, three-inch brims. That whole, you know, like something like this or wider too. He just bought a bunch of Mesas, he's got, you know, Madrids, he's also got uh, Valencia, Seville's, um, you know, all sorts of different things. And um, he's a guy who just loves a good hat and um, he looks good in them. He's a fun guy, he likes to shop, he likes to dress and go out and he smokes cigars and everything. He's a social kind of a dude. So, you know, he gets to wear them. You know, where I tend to like go from, you know, work right back home to play with my son and hang out with my wife, you know, till bedtime. I don't really go out and socialize and stuff. So, you know, for me, it's mostly like a daytime at the hat shop thing or, or on videos or something. But this guy wears hats. He really wears them and um, he wears them to keep warm. He wears them to go out, you know, to like the cigar bars or after work, you know, he's hanging out, going out to dinner. And he's really into it, but um, he ne <coughs> excuse me. He never buys a short brim, and um, he kind of knows what he likes. But he's one of those people who you know asks me sort of uh, you know for feedback and stuff. Now, generally, I wouldn't recommend it for him because I I know it's not his cup of tea. But there are guys that are pretty big, and they wear the Asher. Um, I'm not talking about as big as him, but um, there are people that are real, you know, like refrigerators that you would expect would have a, you know, I'm talking about not only tall um, or fat, you know, just all kinds of different bigs, you know, tall, wide, fat, whatever. Um, the small brims don't generally work, but the Asher is one of those hats that seems to break the rules. Um, it looks good on almost everybody. It's a weird thing. Now, when you go smaller than that brim, forget it. You know, then it, it starts to look like a uh, like a pork pie kind of thing. But the Asher still has this kind of a look. It's like a uh, it's not as brimmy as this. You know, this still has like a brimmy hat look. You know, but it's a. Um, okay, we put on my. Here's my two inch brim. I must have that around somewhere. Alright, here's, here's one of my twos. Alright. Yeah, the Asher is not much bigger looking than this. This is a two or so, that's like a one and three quarter inch. So a one quarter of an inch difference split eighth here and eighth there. You know what an eighth of an inch looks like. It's barely visible. So when people see one and three quarters, they get scared of it. But, you know, they see two and they're like, okay, that's a medium brim. Um, the Asher is one of those hats that I could talk about and talk about. It's really well designed and it seems to, um, seems to be an easy hat for a modern guy. Like if you want to put on a hat, let's say you're sort of just a modern guy, dress, you know, not like vintage and definitely not like in suits or anything, you know, very tailored or elegant, just a regular dude, you know, um, casual young guy or something. You could put an Asher on and it'll have the same effect as like, like a, a flat cap or, uh, you know, like a dressy ball cap or something like that. It's just kind of like modern and casual and not the kind of thing you like stare at. It doesn't look like, you know, like a hat like this, it's a, it's, it's a statement. It looks like a, uh, you know, a detective or an Indiana Jones or, uh, you know, it's, it's a very statement-y thing, you know. It's a big hat, uh, the proportions, but there's something about the Asher when you do it in a mellow color, like gray. Uh, there's a color called, what is it, tawny, I believe, tawny or fawn, whatever they call it, tawny, it's great. It's like a beige color with brown trim. So you're getting kind of like a suede look. It almost looks like you have like a, you know, the felt is made out of suede, like that light beige colored suede, you know, like those uh, old earth shoes, those chucka boots or something. Kind of looks like that. So you're getting this kind of like, I don't know, like Timberland boots or something. It's a very light kind of an earthy thing that looks good with like jeans or washed out jeans or something like that or some kind of like, you know, 
very everyday kind of uh, stuff. Um, the Asher is like that, and, and it's a lot of it is color based too. Like the gray one and the beige one will go casual, but it will also go mega super dressy too if you want. Like if you wear it with an overcoat or a suit or something, you know, it's not, most of my customers are not wearing it that way, but it's a dress hat and the brim is, you know, it's pretty conservative. So if you, you flip it down, especially if you're doing it in blue or black, you know, darker colors like that. But um, that color is dynam that hat is dynamite in every color, the Asher. Um, there's so many different ways to go, like the caps. You know, think about it. A cap is something that you could stick in your pocket. Uh, do I have one here to demonstrate? I'm pretty sure I do. Maybe not. I think they're in my drawer or something. Let me see. You know this is my bedroom, right? All right uh, I can't find it, but my caps, I think, are in my drawer pretty deeply. You can take a cap and fold it away into like a little kind of a cone and stick it in your pocket. So when you're going out, it's kind of a good thing, you know. You get to a, uh, okay, if you have a crushable hat, obviously it's, you know, it's a good thing. You could pack it away. But when you get to a restaurant, you get to the office, your doctor's appointment, or wherever the heck you're going, you can take your hat off, put it away. Now, most of us don't have crushable hats, and the ones who do have crushable hats, a lot of them don't crush them. Most of the people out here don't crush them. Um, some do, a few do, but uh, most people don't. I'm going to say, if you don't have anything like that, consider getting a cap. Flat caps are so warm, too. You could stick your ears in there sometimes, you know, like a, in a baggier one, like a, a newsboy, a Tully, a Baker Boy, or uh, a Gatsby kind of a thing. But they're very, very warm. Um, you could stick in your pocket. They're portable, and they're low-key. It's the kind of thing you can go to a job wearing it, you know, if you need to keep warm or cover your head or whatever. Um, maybe you have long hair you just want to cover up, or maybe you just feel cold, you know. You could put that on and it's like, it's one step past the baseball cap. It's, it's nicer than a baseball cap. It's more like wearing, you know, like a, a very expensive, fashionable, black cashmere Hollywood baseball cap or something, you know, and a cool pair of sunglasses. It's like that. It's a casual statement that's modern, young, and it's light. It's, it's um, you know, these are ways that you can stay light and keep it casual with, uh, wearing good stuff. The Asher is one really good way to go. Um, another way, okay, taupe. It's all about the taupe. Um, taupe is kind of like my secret weapon. Um, we have a hat called the Seville in taupe, which is a kind of a bigger brim, like a uh, like this. It's more like a classic Borsellino or a uh, classic Stetson style. Um, whip stitch, little lower crown than this, a little bit thinner band, it's very elegant, European. Think of a Stetson if it came from Europe and was a little bit more GQ and a little bit more designery, kind of, you know, whatever. Something like that. Um, it's less 40s, 50s, and a little bit more very super fashionable, you know, for like pretty serious fashionable people. I think it's a good style. Um, I've definitely overstated that case there. Um, the Ken is another one, K-E-N, the Ken um, by JJ Hats. We have them made by Rocher in uh, Seville, Spain. That's another fantastic hat. That's a little smaller brim. It's closer to what I'm wearing now, uh, not now, it's closer to this one. Okay. The two inch brim. The Ken is like a medium brim. If you get that hat in taupe or the Seville in taupe, either way, you can get that earthy thing down. Kind of like, um, I don't know, you know, like if you're wearing a pair of jeans or something, you know, in a little bit, you, you just want like a, you don't want to wear something too starchy or business like a Wall Street, like, you know, a charcoal gray or something. Sometimes the earthier colors like taupe, beige, even gray it has that vintage look, but it softens it to some extent in, in a nice way. Um, 
black can also do the same thing. Sometimes black looks cool like a black leather jacket. Uh, you could wear it with jeans and a cool pair of sunglasses, a little black hat, you know, kind of like my tunage. And it becomes, you know, like a cool black leather jacket or something. It's not a formal statement, um, but it's, um, it's something more laid back uh, for people who are not English speakers for their first language. It's more subtle, more laid back, more, more casual, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. But it's approachable. It's the kind of look where you could show up somewhere and people don't think you're a flake because you're wearing your gangster hat. And they don't think you're trying to cover up your bald spot or, you know, why are you wearing that big old hat here and nobody else's? You know what I'm saying? You want to keep it Keep it understated, keep it light, and keep it modern to... It's hard to explain. Like, the Asher, to me, is a modern take on a 1960s, you know, fedora or something. It's a, it's a vintage look, but it's done with very subtle changes, you know. It doesn't have a big, baggy, boxy crown. It doesn't have a big, wide band, a welted edge. Everything about it just looks lighter, softer, smaller. Um, the teardrop almost gives it a slight, like, a, it likens it to like a western or an outback a little, instead of a center crease, which is very elegant looking. Um, it has its own sort of elegance. Um, almost like a tight suit or something like that. That can look really fashionable and really neat, too. It's stylish, yet versatile. Um, yeah, Asher's definitely a great, great hat. I don't even know how much stock we have left on it at this point. Um, another way to go even more casual is to go into the pork pie stuff. Now, basically, the lower you go in the crown, the more casual you're going to appear. The Morgan is a hat that's even smaller in the brim than the um, than the Asher. Instead of one and three quarters, it's one and three eighths inch brim, so it's less than one and a half. Um, it's uh, very small, and it's the lowest crown that we sell in any felt hat. Pretty much any production hat I know of, it's as low as it gets, except for maybe the the stingy wool pork pie. The stingy wool pork pie by Capus Headwear is so low that certain heads can't even get the, uh, you know, you don't even have enough depth for them because the top is also hard too. But um, this hat doesn't have that problem. It's really soft on top and it's got a diamond, it's got like a teardrop thing. So if you do need more depth, the middle of that teardrop just flexes. It just goes up, you know, like a bubble, which is one reason why uh, those are good. Tear, um, diamond crowns can work sometimes better than pork pies for guys with you know, tall heads, big tall guys, dudes who need a lot of depth. Um, it's hard to explain, but if you've got a pork pie, there's just kind of a flat top there, sort of. So if you need more depth, it sort of pops it out at an uneven, uneven way, like one side pops out. But when you're doing a diamond, it's kind of like you have this center area with a bubble. And then the bubble just kind of raises up. And if you need more, we could just steam that a little bit higher, higher, higher. And it's, it hasn't even reached the top yet. And when it gets to the top, it can even go higher. With a pork pie, it doesn't do that. It, it kind of pops out if you try to steam it up. And if you do manage to steam a nice arc on the top there, it looks bad. It looks bubble-like, kind of like, like you don't want to see the crown of the hat. You know, when you're looking at the front, you want to see this part. You don't want to see up there, the bubble, you know? So, essentially, pork pies, they're not as efficient as a diamond crown when you're doing it really deep, deep. But they do work. Even though it's a shallow crown, you can get a lot of depth in it and stuff. Um, I believe that's a great hat, but it's not a fedora. You're crossing over now from, like, a fedora land, short brim fedora the Asher into pork pie lands, which is the Morgan. It's more of a diamond pork pie. What do we got out there? It's a black SUV with police lights. Here comes another one. Black SUV, red, white, and blue flashers. I don't know what they are. Either detectives or maybe fire firemen or something. I don't know. I wish I had my guitar to play, play along. All right. 
how else do you go casual? I mentioned caps. Caps are the best. I mean, they're awesome when you want to go casual. They're also easy. It goes with your lifestyle. If you're an active person, you're walking around and stuff, you don't want to go into brims, you know, you're sitting against the back of a chair in a train, and, you know, um, there's all, you know, in a car, you, know, you gotta take your hat off for this, for that, for a restaurant. A cap, you just fold it and you stick it in your pocket when you need to. If you're in the subway, you could take it off in a restaurant, at a date or something. It doesn't hit the back of your chair and stuff. You could put headphones over a cap. Huh? If you wear big headphones like me, um, I'm a headphone guy. So I tend to wear, you know, like these type, like the closed ones with noise cancellation and stuff. So you can't really do that. But if you're wearing any kind of a cap, you can, you can do it, which is a great plus. Um, I mean, for me, I, I don't use those AirPod things. They don't really jive with my ear shape very well or something. But, um, Going casual, a lot of it is also going to be the way you present your hat, too. Okay, you could take the same hat and present it different ways, too. Um, this is my casual way I do it. Basically, I center it. I get this to the middle of my eyes, centered. Okay, I grab it by the ear and I pull. That's it. That's my, my thing. One ear goes in, one ear is out. So that's my casual thing. It's kind of like, hey, you know, it's got a little attitude and it's very easy to do. I center it and I pull it. That's it. Um, there are other ways to do this too. There's the, um, if you're not a brim up guy, you do this when you center it. Flip the brim down, standard flip down, okay? And then pull it. So then you get that kind of Sinatra, the Broadway tilt, you know, that uh, guys and dolls thing. Okay, the front is still centered because a lot of people when they do that thing they're trying to do that they they tend to like kind of move this to the side or something which you don't want to do so make sure everything's centered front down and then just give it a, a tilt you know to one side and then you get that Michael Jackson Fred Astaire over the eye Liza thing Bob Fosse thing no oh, ambulance okay yeah something happened Anyway, um, casual is a lot of it's in the presentation, the way you wear your hat. If you wear your hat, you know, very square, it's going to look a little bit more conservative. If you give it a little bit of an angle, you can flip the brim up, you know, you're going to have kind of a thing going on, kind of a cool thing. Um, there's all sorts of ways to casualify your hat. This is another one, finger and middle finger in the center like a compass, use your thumb like a compass, stick it right in the center here, okay, and imagine a line, this is a line here, going down, okay, going down, continuing this line at a slant, okay, do it like a compass like this, take it in, take it in, and just push it along. You want to bring it back, snap it up, you want to push that back down, you know, it goes up and down, so, Okay. Let's try it again. Middle finger, the center like a bullseye. Get the thumb right in there, right in the, the tip. Okay. If it uh, doesn't feel right, move it forward a little closer to the front of the hat. And then just dig it in a little bit to the right angle that you're going down. See what I did? I dug it as a little slant, put my finger back there and pivot. I'm actually turning the hat, is what I'm doing. Hand stays the same. Watch my hands here. I'm moving it. That's how you do it. So that'll give you a little casual kind of thing, too. You want to do that, you know. Yeah. It's a little bit more like uptown casual, so not everybody's going to go for that, but it's cool, you know. Earth tones, taupe, brown, mink. This is a great color, mink. It's a fantastic color to wear with uh, jeans, leather jackets, um, 
anything that's casual. It'll look good with black, you know, with your black stuff, your charcoal stuff. It breaks it up. You know, you can wear brown shoes with your other colors and match it. Um, earth tones. It's going to keep it casual. Black and navy, usually they're going to look dressier. I try to stay away from black and navy, um, unless it's a short brim. The short brim hats, I'll do black. Otherwise, I get afraid sometimes of the, um, the rabbi thing. You know, I don't want it to look too, too look like a religious hat. Um, so I stay away from the wide brims and the black together, you know. Especially if you're doing beaver, you know, the furry ones. Furry black, wide brim. Thank <laughs> you.